I'd rather die than compromise my gut. Mm. Yeah. It just doesn't feel good enough. Like, if you're gonna lose, lose on your own sword. The Gary V Audio Experience. Hey everybody, it's Gary Vaynerchuk. Uh, super excited for this episode. Uh, as many of you know, I've become shockingly selective during COVID and even right before it on guests on the podcast. I've, I, you know, just just want to be thoughtful about what fills these pipes. And you know, uh, to me, I want to be selective on individuals who I think could bring value uh, in their stories or their execution. And today is one of such things. I'm super, super excited to have Jamie on the show. Um, I'm going to let her introduce herself. And then I've got a series of questions because I've been watching from afar as she's developed her career and executions. And, uh, and I'm excited to uh, share them with this audience. I, I'm sure many of you will know, but I know many, many of you won't. Uh, just that's how it always works. I, Jamie, every time I'm on a podcast, they're like, everybody knows. I'm like, eh. And then on Twitter, oh, for the first, time, first time, I think people, you know, there's so much out in the world, but I, I know you also have a new book. So that's going to be fun to talk about. So without further ado, uh, why don't you tell the Vayner Nation who you are uh, and what's cooking? And I know that we'll probably post this in a couple of days, which is right before the February 23rd date, which is exciting. And so why don't you give us the 411? All right, well, Gary, thank you so much for having me. Um, I'm super excited to share this big week with you too and your, your whole community, so thank you. Yeah, my name is Jamie Kern Lima and uh, I'm probably most well known, uh, like if you Google my story, you'll probably see Denny's Waitress builds billion dollar company. So I started a company in my living room called It Cosmetics and went through three years of hearing no from just about everyone in the world, got down to my last thousand dollars and, um, Kept going, eventually built that company uh, and sold it to L'Oreal for over a billion dollars. And, uh, and you know, but that's what you see online. And why I wrote my first ever book, Believe It, is because the real story behind the story is, you know, I'm, I'm a girl who went from not believing in myself uh, to learning how to believe in myself and like doubting I'm enough to, to having to, to learn to know I'm enough and just trying to figure out how to get through all the setbacks and and kind of step into the person I was born to be. So I know that's not just my story, it's a story of so many people listening right now um, on their own journeys of, of learning to believe in themselves and, and trust themselves and, and know they're enough. And I uh, just wanna say thank you to you, Gary, also for all that you do to inspire everyone um, on their own journeys. You know, you kind of always share the story behind the story of everything. So that's why I'm super, super honored to, to be part of your show. Thank you for saying that. Let's let's take a step back because it is such an such a massive accomplishment. It's like so fun to be on here, and I think you know, I've just I've been trying to be more thoughtful about giving more examples of people who've made it than you know. I think we get into the laziness of, and they're incredible, Elon Musk or Bezos or Oprah or you know. But I feel like there are some really crazy ass stories out there <laughs> and yours is one of them. So if you don't mind to indulge me, cause I'm going to enjoy it. I think it really matters. I think, you know, for I get hit up all the time by immigrants, like kids that grow up that are not good students in immigrant families. When they see me, it means something. I think your yeah. story is so universal with so few. And I mean, so few to get to the sheer level of financial success. Um, and, and I think even the way you set this up around emotional success and things of that nature, more people can get there and don't need the financial levels that you've achieved. But, but I do think knowing this is an entrepreneurial audience, I, I do think it's important to get into a little bit of the details because I think you might say one sentence that might inspire somebody to persevere because you, know, you went with a macro down to a thousand bucks. Like there's some real stuff there. Like break this down. Like give me five minutes of how you came up with the company idea yeah. And then like and then like 12 or 13 highlights of the of the path of how it went down. Yeah, sure. So, you know, I uh, it's so funny because I, I was working as a journalist, which I thought was my dream job. Um, ever since I was a little girl, I would watch Oprah every single day, Gary. And I I thought, oh, my gosh, I want to spend my life telling other people's stories. Like I knew that was what I was going to do my whole life. And so I was I was what I thought was working in my dream job as a, as a news anchor. And then I got a skin condition uh, called Ooh. rosacea and I learned there's no cure for it. And I would be anchoring the news live. And what would start to happen is my, my cheeks 
uh, would get so bright red and inflamed that they the makeup would start to break up uh, and this redness would come through. And so I went through this season in my life that I thought was a setback, like a big setback. I would be anchoring the news live and I'd hear from my producer uh, in my earpiece who was just trying to have my back. They'd be like, there's something on your face. There's something on your mm -hmm. face. You need mm -hmm. to wipe it off. You need to wipe it off. And I knew there was nothing I could wipe off. Um, and so I went through this sort of like struggle with um, confidence, with sure. like inner critic stuff, thinking, am I gonna get fired? Am I gonna lose ratings? But in that set, in that season of setback, like I didn't realize it was actually, well, so many times our setbacks are really our setups, right? <laughs> For something that, that we're supposed to actually do. And um, I started just trying to find any makeup product that would work. And I realized nothing would. And I realized that when you see ads on TV, you typically just see models with perfect skin mm -hmm. or they're photoshopped. And so and I what, had what, what year what year is this to set it up for everybody? Yeah, so this is 2007 okay. is when this started happening. Yeah. And, uh, and I kind of thought, okay, I'm in my dream job, but I started getting this gut feeling like, what if I could figure out how to make a product that worked for me? It'd probably help a whole lot of other people too. Um, but I sat there in this weird spot. Maybe a lot of people are in this spot now where- I lost you. Some people are at this weird spot. Yep. Go ahead. You want to take, take that back? Okay, go I, we, I love, like, I'm not one of these post product. you know, back to imperfections. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think it's crazy when people like start from the beginning or like, like the audience listening, like, I don't know for everybody who's listening at home right now, but I have a funny feeling that Zoom and StreamYard and Google Hangouts or FaceTime has frozen for everybody many times over the last <laughs> year. So we will yeah, put some totally. we'll put some we'll put some funny music over that. Keep going. We kind of lost okay, you at perfect. the point where you're like, I found myself in this funny spot. Yeah, I thought, you know, I was in the season of setback and and really it was a setup. So I was in this spot though where my gut was telling me, like, you need to, you need to do this, you need to go after it. But my head was saying, you're not qualified. Uh, you have almost no money. You have no connections. Like, you know, I knew nothing, Gary, about how do I start a, a beauty company? Like, I had no idea. Right. Um, but, you know, when I look back at everything, I just, I just want to share this with you and your whole Please. audience. Because I, I think we're in this culture a lot of times where it's like, don't quit. Whatever you do, just don't quit. Don't quit. Don't quit. And I think the victory isn't when you don't quit. I think the victory is when you're able to tune in and hear your own gut and know, like sometimes knowing when to let go of a dream is as important as knowing when to go after one. And in that moment, I thought I was in my dream job. I thought my whole life, I this is what I want to do is share other people's stories. And all of a sudden, I just had this gut feeling like I'm supposed to quit what I thought was my dream job and start this crazy entrepreneurial journey that didn't make sense in my head. It just made sense in my gut. And when I look back over so many of these moments, I feel like listening to my gut is like, like those are the moments you, that change you, our lives. Do you, do you think intuition is grossly misunderstood and underrated? I think it's misunderstood because I think that we have so much noise around us. I believe, Gary, like every person listening, whether they're 12 years old or 112 years old, I think I think we all have intuition, like a knowing inside of us. And I think our knowing's always right. I think our knowing I, is I, more I'm, a, I'm sorry, finish. No, no, I was gonna say, I think our knowing is more powerful even than anyone else's advice. But I think that we have so much noise around us from other people's opinions to our own oh, self-doubt, right? That it gets so loud, we start to not even be able to hear our own intuition anymore. So most people haven't even heard their own intuition in a long time or they don't know how. I would tell you that I couldn't applaud that POV more. It is my belief that my happiness, which matters to me the most, and then comma, my success, which I have pride in my professional life, is 100% predicated on my inability to compromise my intuition. I believe intuition mm -hmm. is uncomfortably misunderstood. I believe that A students and very narrow uh, kind of rigid thinkers, which most people are, have demonized intuition. Mm -hmm. I think intuition is looked upon as careless and is positioned as silly or flaky or whatever else you wanna call it. And I will tell you that it is basically 
something that I've started exploring with myself and I believe it is a category of information that I will talk a lot more about because basically everything good that I've decided that has gone on to be very, very good has been far more based on intuition than anything else. I, you know, I have the exact same experiences. Like, like how I broke through this crazy crowded beauty space and, and built something that ended up passing all of the, the companies I used to save my tip money as a Denny's waitress to buy in department stores was literally figuring out how to hear my own intuition and then trust it. That's the other part of it, right? And like, I love that you're talking about this. And by the way, for so many people, that's how they hear God or their faith, whatever faith they practice, right? right. Or, or even the universe, they hear it through their own intuition. And um, I think it's like, I think it's your superpower. That's what I think. Um, I think that it's literally the one thing that changes everything that if I were an entrepreneur or even just someone that wanted to go after a dream or I mean, that's the biggest thing I would focus on is how do I tune into and hear my own gut and how do I differentiate that from all the ways around me or other what, people? What, 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 what is your intuition? <laughs> it's funny. Mm -hmm. uh, I do say that a lot, I, I just realized. What is your intuition on the other ingredient needed for this to actually work, which is the ability to be comfortable with failure? Because I'll mm -hmm. tell you the reason I'm in love with my intuition is a couple of reasons. One, humility. My intuition has been the driver of so much success. It has also led to many failures. Mm -hmm. It is my capacity to be comfortable in my micro failure that has allowed me to continuously trust my intuition. Thoughts? Yeah, thoughts are, okay, I'm gonna say something you might freak out over or disagree no, I'm really with. excited. I think, <laughs> I think every time your intuition leads you to a failure, I don't think it's a failure. I think it's part of your, 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 uh, destiny and your destined and your serendipitous journey where you had to build that muscle so can in order I, to so carry can, the so weight can I, of so, your success. So can I stop you? Because I don't yes. think that's crazy at all. I actually, it makes me want to ask you something else. Do you believe that your optimism in your blood and soul is also a in required ingredient to make what we're talking about here work? Because what I'm thinking about is the people on the other side, right? Yeah. And now we're, they're listening to two successful people talking about intuition and they're basically saying, fuck these two. Like, okay, good, but like, you guys got lucky. And I know that I know a million people that have quote unquote got lucky in different levels of success financially, um, but have happiness of their journey. But it is ingredients, it's a, it's a concoction. It is not a straight like, it's kind of like diseases, right? It's never like, oh, pepper, no. It's like, for example, with COVID, I hear like it's this thing and then the zinc can get in. It's mixtures, right? HIV, right? It was a cocktail. I'm listening carefully to you. We went intuition. Now what I wanna know, we, then we went with capacity to be comfortable with failure, AKA humility. Now I'm asking you because your answer is like, no, no, Gary, let me send you a different way. And I'm with you on this. I, actually, I do them as micro failures, but to your point, life is so serendipitous, you just don't know. You know, but, I, but I'm fascinated by your next, the next statement, which looks like this. Do you believe that your optimism allows this all to work? Because if you are looking at losses as in, well, this was meant to be part of my journey and this scar is actually attractive, because that's how I think about it. I think about all those losses as scars and like that scar giving you character and that's attractive. Do you believe that optimism was an incredibly big factor and ingredient in your success? I think optimism is great. I think though that knowing why we're doing what we're doing, listening to our gut and going after our calling, like literally living our calling, I think that's the victory. Hold on, um, hold on though. Yeah. Here's, here's an interesting question. Every human needs levels of affirmation along the way to sustain yeah. that. Right, yeah. and so in the beginning where you're not seeing those results mm -hmm. for many, and I, you might have, you know, I've always seen results pretty quickly in my good calls. So I, I always try to think about someone who's not seeing it so because they don't have optimism, they have delusion and they think they're gonna be, you know, Beyonce when they can't sing, right? Mm -hmm. do, do you feel like the, you know, believing in your calling gets affirmed along the way? What do you rely on in that beginning don't you think blind faith is actually 
completely grounded in optimism? I mean, for me, my faith is a huge part of my of I'm my sorry. life. I don't, I, I'm going to take religion as faith out. On, on yeah. the, I'm saying I'm. I was, you know, I'm just thinking about you, young you, in this moment, and I'm really fascinated by it. I'm meant to do this because what you're talking about is what I love, which is the journey. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I don't. I'm trying to get victory, into your. Go ahead, please. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say I don't think the victory is the outcome, right? I don't think the victory. Listen, I know, I know how accomplished you are and everything. I know you're gonna have the New York Jets one day. I know all that, but I don't think that's the victory. I think the victory is 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 the journey of actually oh, yeah. like stepping into all of who you are and not talking yourself out of your own truth. And yes. what I mean by that is this journey of that we're talking about, right? Of course, optimism. Of course. Uh, resiliency to get back up every time you're knocked down, of course, all those things. But I think that so many people listening right now, if they don't ever learn to get still and hear their own truth and hear their own intuition, I think what's going to happen, and this is what happens to most people, is they end up uh, staying in their comfort zone. They end up uh, uh, putting other, their own immediate failures on a pedestal or other people's opinions or self-doubt. They end up talking themselves out of their own truth and then they end up never actually becoming the person they're born to be. So for me, I don't think like the fact that I was able to build a billion dollar company is a victory. I think the moment of me knowing this is what I'm supposed to do and trusting it, even when it doesn't make sense. Um, and I'll give you one example, okay, of, of, of this. So, and maybe this will this will make sense because optimism, of course, is important. And I, and I know what you're saying. But I think the biggest thing is learning how to hear yourself and trust yourself. I really believe that. Um, there was a moment how do, you where, how do you define that that as a term? Because I view that as self-belief and confidence and optimism. I'm just, I think that yeah. you're such a, you know, very quickly I'm like, oh, she, okay, this is, a, this is my sister. Like literally within the first three seconds, yeah. I'm like, oh, I see, oh, I see. So I just, what yeah, I'm trying yeah, yeah. to do, and I apologize because I want, I'm hoping a different voice might do this for the listener. I'm trying to figure out what words you use to quantify. Yeah. I, I fully agree with you. Everything you're saying. I, I'm wondering if you view optimism as, so I think optimism, similar to what we were talking about earlier, sometimes gets pegged as delusion. Mm, yeah. And okay, I've been thinking I about, you. you see where I'm going? Because I could almost yep. feel you doing that right now. And I'm like, I get you, yep. sister. Because like, like this isn't why I, like, it's so great. Wordsmithing matters, right? Like, for example, hustle has gotten demonized as like burnout. So I no longer use it because I don't need it. You know what I'm gonna call it? Work ethic, call it what you want. Here's what I can tell you. For all the belief you had and all the love you had in doing what you were doing, I'm a pretty confident based on your outcome that there was a lot of work ethic there. And so whatever you wanna call it, and sometimes I just think about, I know the word hustle triggers people, so I use the word work ethic now because I don't wanna ever not let anybody who cares to listen to me not realize that if you don't put in the work, it yeah. is impossible. Thoughts on that? Yeah, I agree with that. And I just had a big aha moment that what you're saying is optimism. I a billion percent agree with, and I, I, I'm i thinking of that right now as belief. Um, right. Same thing, yep, that. and now I'm right there with you. Like, here's the thing, when, when and then I wanna share one quick story with you too Please. that I, hopefully someone listening right now maybe needs to hear, but, I mean, when I look back, it's like when people are like, oh, how did you start with close to nothing and build a billion dollar company? It's like, yeah, I got, you know, I got back up every time I got knocked down and I followed my gut and I worked really, really hard. Uh, but I do think that one of the most important things I did was just like how to build a billion dollar company from nothing. Like I think one of the most important things is making that decision to believe that you can. Yes, and for me, that that's optimism, exactly what you're saying, and I and I guess I call it belief. So yeah, a million percent with that. Um, and one more thing, just on maybe people listening to us right now that are like, oh, Gary, like Jamie, I you know I trust my gut sometimes, and it's wrong, or I tried it once and it didn't work, or I don't know how you know don't know how to hear my own intuition. I just want to say I think that it is a muscle that we can all build and I think people have to give themselves grace, right? It's almost it reminds me of like when you start to meditate, a lot of people try it and they can't do it. They're like they go through their to-do list in their head the whole time they're trying to meditate or, but you have to like give yourself grace and start and you know what I would say uh, whether it's entrepreneurs or someone who's 14 years old and out there dating right now, I would say when you start to look back at your experiences and think about moments when you had a gut feeling 
and you didn't follow it. Like we've all dated like a sketchy guy or ske- <laughs> like a, or had a, f- <laughs> and like, you're like, you know, his phone didn't really just dis- like shut off for three days or he didn't lose the phone. He went right. like, you know, and then you kind of make that decision of like, you, okay. You talk, talk to me about, I mean, we are really vibing here. I actually want to talk to you offline because I just have had the thought. Um, talk to, like, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I'm so excited. Right. <laughs> Insecurity. Yeah. Right, because you're like to me, like thinking to my girlfriends, friends that were girls that were dating guys that I knew what the guys were doing, which was they were preying on my friends' insecurities, and sometimes brilliant, beautiful girls. And I'm like, this fucking sucks. Yeah, this woman, you really triggered something in me. This woman, I'm thinking about four or five friends through the last twenty years. This woman is subjectively, and if we had a hundred people ask, is a million miles better than this man. This man has figured out the cheat code that if he makes her feel insecure, he has the leverage. Thoughts? Yep. yep. I think that happens every single day. And I think that we uh, we look for people <laughs> that um, treat us how we believe we deserve to be treated. Like like we find partners. So you, that so you, so, so you, go, you go with, cool, before you worry about jerk off Johnny, this is a big game of, your own lack of self-love towards you. It's your own lack of self-love because here's the thing, and I don't know your friends, so I'll just say this. <laughs> I'll, I'll make a general I mean, statement. You'll, you'll appreciate this. This was mainly 17 to 25 years old because you see that so commonly there. I mean, in later stages, you know, people are in really deep relationships and you're in different parts of your life. When you're going through high school and college, you're spending so much time with people, you get better reads to the clean, the cleanness of the data is like, oh, this is really fucked up. When you're older, you're running in different circles, you don't really get to see it as easily. Right, and I think that whether, you know, no matter your age, this is what I believe. I think that <laughs> when someone's treating us like crap and we stay with them, I think it's because it's we deep down inside don't believe we deserve better yet. And here's the thing for, for people like that, that are dating your friend who's totally screwing them over. Right. If you were to bring the the best, most, most amazing, beautifully like kind person into their space, that same girl would probably put them in the friend zone. I couldn't because, agree more. Yeah. Because they don't I yet. I couldn't deep down agree more. Inside, yeah. believe. Okay. Yeah, it's, that it's they, what, they deserve it's what they're, it, and and also people value different things through their life. Mm. You know, one of yeah. the things you know, right now we live through a generation desperately interested in blaming social media for lack of accountability. They're just pointing mm. fingers, right? Mm. Like, it, if you are in a good place with yourself and your perspective is strong around gratitude, an anonymous person's negative comment is not going to ruin your day. Yeah. And I think when it does, I think that's what's so tough, right? That's when it's a reminder to ourselves like, oh yeah, we have some more work to do. Um, One of the things I talk about in my book, Believe It, is just that ability to learn to turn down the volume uh, on certain things and turn up the volume on other things. Like one one example, um, we were three years into building the company, right? I was hearing no from everyone, Gary, like from all the retailers I dreamed of carrying our products that I used to shop in, right? I would save my tip money, like I mentioned, as a Denny's waitress and buy products in the department stores. Or in and what, and, what, and Jay, what, what, what year was this? Uh, so, so we launched 2007, uh, like I quit my job 2007. I wrote the business plan on my honeymoon flight to South Africa with my husband, not the most romantic way to kick off a marriage. And we both got back, uh, quit our jobs, dove all in. I thought Gary, maybe so many entrepreneurs listening. I thought, Oh, if I just pour everything I have and actually create a product that works, like it's just going to sell. If it's that good, it's just going to sell. Uh, and then I didn't realize it would be the hard, I mean, I've had a lot of jobs in, in my life, but being an entrepreneur is by far. Well, you especially also built that brand different than building a brand today where you can use Shopify and social media to build it. You had to get a yes from Sephora, Alta, you know, Walmart, yeah. Walgreens, and, and you know, Macy, whoever it was. And that is difficult when you're innovating the way you did. Do you know that my whole life is no? Do you know VaynerMedia? A lot of people listening don't know this. Most brands don't want to say yes to VaynerMedia. We don't want to do a commercial and then go to sleep. Like we don't want to take 12 weeks to do the perfect commercial and then do print ads that look like it or banner ads or digital programmatic. My whole life building VaynerMedia is no. 
Everything I do is Gary Vee's easy. I just do it with the audience. But Vayner Media is exactly, I know what you're living through because when you innovate and you're doing something different and you don't look the part, you didn't work at Procter & Gamble for 13 years. Yeah. Or like, what's this Washington State thing? Like, they, you know, you know what it is. Well, and it's wild because I would go in and start, you know, I would pitch the product. And, you know, we were staying alive uh, on social media. So we were getting, you know, people were, were writing just blogs at that point, And we were selling like one to three orders a day on our website and people were, were spreading the word. That was the only way we, we barely stayed alive. But all the retailers, exactly what you said. And by the way, I've learned this, like when you're doing something that's authentic or that is different, but even if it's just authentic to you, even in a crowded industry, by definition, it's novel. By definition, it's never been done before. And I really believe, looking back now at this journey and and and, and everything, I believe that like even vi- even a lot of visionaries, touted visionaries, I think they can't imagine anything being successful unless subconsciously they have they have proof in the back that they've already seen it and it's already worked. So it's like, of course, so many people are going to say no to your dream or doubt your dream if they've never seen it done before. And we had three years of every single beauty retailer saying, no, you're not the right fit. Uh, it's not going to work. You're not right for our customers. And I kept, and by the way, we talk about gut feeling. I kept having this gut feeling we're supposed to go on QVC because then I could actually like mm. show my bright red rosacea and prove live that our product mm. works, mm. unlike the photoshopped ads on TV. And this is just something to share for someone who might need to hear this right now, who's having a gut feeling, but it, they feel like they're wrong. Like I kept having this feeling. And every time I would do a meeting with QVC, it would be a no. Every phone call I'd finally get, like I got their head guy, Alan Burke on the phone. Um, <laughs> he's like a legend. He's responsible for building this billion dollar uh, beauty empire on QVC. And I finally got him on a call and I thought for sure it was gonna be a yes. And because if he's taking his precious time and it was about a minute into the call and he said, I just need to let you know, we've reviewed your product with all the buyers. It's unanimous, it's a no you're not the right fit for QVC. And of course I like poured my heart and I'm like, oh, but I am the right fit. And then I, you know, we were down to under a thousand dollars in our, our bank account at that point. So I remember like crying myself to sleep and at, long story short, a year later when I finally did get a yes to go on QVC, um, I took this big risk that that I was advised not to by consultants. And I put real women of all shapes and sizes and skin tones and skin challenges. And I showed my own bare face and all the things yes. that had never been done yes. before. We sold out at the 10 minute mark. I was crying on national television because it's live. QVC is live to hundred yep. million homes. You knew, and that, you knew the truth and your heart yeah. would win, not you know, students telling you what to do. Yeah, you know, and and listen, it was a big risk, but I feel like I know this lesson that like I know this and now I've seen it play out with thousands of entrepreneurs over the years, but you I know that authenticity alone doesn't guarantee success, but in authenticity oh, guarantees uh, love failure. That. Love that. Right? Love that. I, listen. Always. I mean, you are preaching. I'd rather <laughs> die. I'd rather die than compromise my gut. Mm. Yeah. It just doesn't feel good enough. Like if you're gonna lose, lose on your own sword. Yeah. I think the worst thing in the world to do is to lose based on somebody else's advice. I really believe that. Yes. And you know what else to that? Don't think, don't even necessarily think because you're losing right now that you've lost. And what I mean by that is go ahead, I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh no, I was gonna say, Gary, like, like, so this is wild, right? So Alan Burke, the guy I just mentioned, after we finally got on to QVC, so he's the guy that said no, I cried myself to sleep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. After um we got onto QVC, that one airing turned into five that year, a hundred and one the next year. And then I did over 250 live shows a year for eight years in a row. And we built the largest beauty brand in QVC's history. So it is right now at this moment that you and I are talking. And when Alan Burke retired, and by the way, he ended up being becoming one of my greatest mentors after of we course. launched on QVC. Um, he's so brilliant, to be honest. And I, I, after he retired, we actually hired him in a paid position on our advisory board at Cosmetics. So the guy who rejected me much, is a, now working for me. I love that. First of all, that's amazing. <laughs> I need a much more interesting one. At his retirement dinner, did he publicly say that you were his biggest miss? And then later... <laughs> well, so here's the funny thing. He would say that and he has said that, but here's what I know. I know that had he said yes sooner, I know that I didn't know what I didn't know. Had he said yes sooner, we would have failed. Because you think so? I do because what why? I learned later. As somebody who's so intuitive, why do you not believe that a year earlier you would have gone with your gut? 
I would have, but at the time, and maybe this was just serendipitous grace, but at the time, what I learned later was uh, we, you know, the QVC is massive, right? Like the one airing I got, I had to sell 6,000 units in 10 minutes to hit the sales goal or not come back. Um, What I learned later was like, had he said yes any sooner, we were not operationally sophisticated enough to handle an account that size on the back end. So maybe that was just serendipity. I see. Grace. I see. You um, might have you might have sold them up front, but logistically you were not prepared. Right. Yeah. And so I, I feel that. like that was divine timing in that case. And you know, um, one other one other thing to share too. Just and by the way, I knew in my gut we were supposed to be on QVC, but for three years they said no. Right. And then we end up building the biggest. Beauty Brown and QVC's history. And I just want to share that because I know there's people listening right now that think like, oh, I'm tr- I'm listening to my gut. I feel strongly, but I have no proof around me that my business is succeeding or that I'm not getting the traction I want or I'm not getting, but it's can like- I, Can I throw something at you? Because we're running yeah. out of time here. I, as a matter of fact, this is pissing me off. I'm sorry, I have this hardcore meeting that I'm already late for. Um, everyone, this is what sucks about actually being a businessman, not a content producer. When every time you like, and I'm trying to be better about it, not interrupting, even though I got excited here and I know I interrupted many times. No. Couple things. One, give everybody your handles because I have a feeling a bunch of new fans were just created. So I want to make sure they follow you so they can continue the journey. Two, Vayner Nation, I'm telling you, this is very obvious to me. You have to buy this book, which is coming out now, or you should pre, like, I feel like we're going to air this in a couple days, which is probably a day or two before the book comes out, which I think is the 23rd. So you should definitely go to Amazon or Barnes and Nobles and pre order it or order it immediately. Jim, give the handles and give the name of the book so everybody can find it real quick. And, yeah. then, I'll, and then I have one more question. Okay, thank you. So Jamie Kern Lima, and I'm at Jamie Kern Lima on Instagram. Uh, the book is called Believe It. And there's a ton of free gifts for this week for your whole community on launch uh, for the launch of the book on believeit.com. So giving mm-hmm. a course away and a 95 page action plan uh, that helps you implement all the lessons from the book in your real life. And Gary, it's really a book for anyone who just is struggling with self doubt and wants to know how to truly like go from not believing in themselves to believing in themselves. So it's called Believe It and everything's on believeit.com. Jay, do you do you believe that had you failed as an elderly woman, you would have been thrilled because at least you went for it? Yes, Mm -hmm. yes. Uh, That's where I wanna go with this, everyone. This is the bow on this, or maybe the cherry on this very nice cake. I think what's incredibly important in James' message is that part. You may be sitting, I, I love what she's doing. She communicates like I do. She's trying to get into the psyche and saying, look, I get it, you're two years in, you're like, I believe it, I believe it. Well, we don't know because many of you fall into this camp. There are people who believe it, and then there are people who genuinely are so not self-aware that they're delusional, and they think they're gonna be professional athletes when they can't run or they can't jump. That happens, and that's not fun for me to say, but what I think is even if you aren't destined for this massive success, it's still a bigger win, whether you're delusional or you believe it, I still think at 75, at 95, at 103, you're gonna be pumped that you went for it because you won't have regret. Jane? Yep, I have goosebumps right now. That's everything. You agree with that? I agree, that's everything. All right, everybody, please pick up the book. As you can tell, my energy, I'm excited about it. I'm sorry I had to cut it a hair short. Um, That is just the reality of my life, but I'm sure Jamie will be on the circuit, so go Google her and find her in other podcasts and things of that nature, and we thank you, and I'm stealing one 30-second moment for myself, which I rarely do, so I'm gonna do that. Bye, everybody. Jamie, thank you so much. Believeit.com, go check it out. Get the freebies with the book. Thank you. Thank you. YouTube watcher, what's up, it's Gary Vee. First of all, thank you so much. I hope you're doing super well during these times. Uh, I also wanna ask you, please subscribe because my commitment and exploration of YouTube is about to explode. Stories, polls, more content, more engagement, more surprise and delight. This is the time to subscribe. I hope you consider it and I hope I see you soon.